Here's Mike Winters. And good morning. It is 19 minutes after 9 o'clock and joining us in studio this morning from the Roswell Humane Society. Crystal Noble back with us. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Hot. It is hot. Yeah. And even like, like I'm at the point now where like, even when it's not 108 hot, it's just hot. And you're like, ugh. It's like it's 85 right now, which in theory is not really that bad. But when it's 9 in the morning, you're just like, ugh, it should not feel this way this uh, this early in the day. When you wake up and you're already, ugh. Yeah. That means it's going to be a ugh, <laughs> ugh yeah. day. So stay cool out there. And and uh, and as we uh, – actually, I was mentioning uh, at the end of last hour, and I was just showing Crystal here, um, reminder, the pets do not do well on asphalt and things like do not walk your dogs in the middle of the day. Uh, out on the concrete sidewalks and asphalt and things like it that. It's too hot. It's way too hot. Uh, even it, like I was just the, the Main Street Roswell signs that they're posting up. 70, was it 77 degrees? And the asphalt's already over 100 125. Degrees. And 125 degrees uh, is just even for a few seconds is enough to burn skin. So, yes. so please uh, be cognizant of that when you take your dogs out to walk. Keep them on the grass. Keep them out there very short periods of time, uh, things like that. Don't be putting them out on the on the streets or on the sidewalks. Save that for either oh early in the morning, before the sun comes up before early. The sun, yeah, and even even like nights the, late. Even late at night, sometimes the asphalt will still, still too hot. Yeah. Stay too hot. So so you got to wait till it's like dark, dark, and let it get cooled off a little bit. So and then by that time, the mosquitoes are officially out. And, or you're ready for bed. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, they do sell dog shoes at Petco and Walmart. Okay. Um, and so that's a good if alternative. If your dog is willing to wear them, sure. that's, you know, a different story. But, you know, they're not really made for asphalt walking. They're more made for when they go outside to go potty and it's, like, icy and cold. Okay. But so they, they got, like, traction on them, basically? They kind of like, do. They're gotcha. like little snowshoes for dogs. Yeah, yeah. But they do have some for, like, hot weather, you know, to help keep them from burning their pads. Good. Um, but the most important thing is... If you walk outside barefooted and your feet are sizzling, don't put your dogs outside. Exactly, exactly. And uh, and when you can feel the feet here, blah, feel the heat coming up through the insoles of your shoes. Mm -hmm. That is way too hot for your dogs to be outside. Yeah. Why would you make your your pets walk on fire? Which in essence is what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing the lava walk yeah. challenge. You know, it's kind of what's going on there too. And then obviously. The one we got to do every time warm weather comes out, and you're like, "Why do we have to do this?" Because people still do this. Um, do not leave your ve your vehicles unattended with pets in them uh, while you go into grocery stores or wherever you're shopping. Unless um, you have the auto cars that mm -hmm. you can leave them running with the air conditioner on and keep them locked. Yeah. Um, still keep the windows cracked for you know fresh circulation. Mm -hmm. But. If you don't have that capability, don't take your dogs to the store with you. Yeah, and I've even heard some people get a little nervous about that, depending how rambunctious your dog is, because it might knock it into gear or something if they get too excited. Well, so my car, um, I can start it, mm -hmm. and then it'll run for ten minutes, and it will. You can't like put it in gear or any without of that the key without or anything. the key. Ah, that makes sense. So, like if you're Going in to go pay for fuel or something, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. But if you're going in to do your week's grocery shopping, don't take them. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's yeah, leave them at home. And then, and then the other thing we need to remind you, too, is look, people are taking family vacations. Uh, I guess even more are hitting the road because we've seen gas prices and we've seen air travel prices. So the people that are going vacation, probably a lot of them are hitting the road, which means they want to take their pets with them on vacation, which is great. But... Remember, that's a logistic you have to uh, factor in on your vacation. You can't you can't now eat in restaurants that aren't pet friendly. You can now not stay in places that aren't pet friendly. So so you're going to have to be a little bit more meticulous on your stop trap plans and things. You might have to go through drive-throughs at, at various fast food places and find a park nearby to sit down and eat them because your dog needs to go to the bathroom and you know get watered and fed and everything else too. And you get a hotel room, you can't leave your dog out in, in the car for the night. That's that's just cruel and, and not, I mean, that's mean. <laughs> so, and you're probably going to have somebody shatter your windows and take your dog. Yeah, and so so you got to find lodging that will be pet friendly for those things. So if you plan accordingly, it's great. And, 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 and I'll tell you this right now, taking a dog is like taking a baby. You're going to have to bring, like, the water thing. The, you, you know how you, you bring a baby and they got the mom and dad got like 80,000 backpacks full of stuff 
just to get through the day with that kid, you're going to have to do the same thing with your dog while you're traveling. You need your portable water bowl. You need your portable food bowl. You uh-huh. need your water. You need your food. You need their special blankie if they've got a wooby. Mm-hmm. If they've got a harness, they got a leash. You know, all of those things you need to pack for and plan for. Yeah. So... Just, but just, also, just telling you that if you're going on vacation, check the weather ahead. Yeah. Because the places you might want to go visit that are pet friendly, it might be too hot. Yeah. Like trips to the Grand Canyon might be. That's a, little... a no. <laughs> if you're planning on going to the Grand Canyon and you want to take your dog with you, do it in the month of December. Yeah. 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 It's it's a cool place. But yeah, when it's hot, it's not a lot of uh places to cool off or a lot of that kind of stuff so just be warned be yeah plan ahead and by all means if you love doing that god bless you do it have fun with it but you've got to plan ahead and if you don't you're going to make it much worse for your pet and yourself your trip's not gonna be nearly as fun too when you got all that stuff going on so no and if you're able to you know have your animal boarded while you're gone sure you know there's several places in town that board Mm -hmm. Um, even if you know somebody that's willing to come over to your house and take care of your pet so you don't have to board Yeah, them. that's what I usually do is I got friends that'll come. I have cats, so they're a little easier. To, mm-hmm. You just got to check in on them from time to time. They they kind of pretty much do their own thing, you know. <laughs> so but, Now they get lonely and, and, and very demanding when I get back wanting of my services. But as far as making sure they got fo- food, water, and uh, the litter boxes cleaned out occasionally, that doesn't take much. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's just the uh, complaining you hear when you get home. Exactly. When I get home, they Where get Where have you been? Why have you been gone so long? Mm. And I'm about to tell you that you have not hit the kill zone button in a few days, and it's ramped up. <laughs> and then uh, one of my cats, depending on how long we've been gone, will play the snub game. Like, for a couple hours, be like, oh, I don't, you know, I'm not interested in you. It's like, oh, whatever, you're back. Okay. And then about an hour in, she'll jump on your lap and be all kind of loving. But it's like she's kind of mad but trying to play like 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 she's, she's trying to ignore you or something like she's trying to give it back to you but she's like oh you're gonna leave me i'm not paying attention she doesn't have the willpower after about an hour of that nonsense she's up in my face <laughs> and everything else so <laughs> she's like i'm gonna give you an hour to settle in but you're gonna realize that i'm not yeah. happy about this a lot of times she doesn't but once in a while if we do like a whole week or something and come back she's she's like a little like stays away doesn't want to be and then we go pet her and then after a while she but she almost plays like she's a little mad at you kind of thing. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. My but, dogs are mad at me every day when I come home from work. Why didn't I go to work with you today? <laughs> but the point is, plan ahead, plan yes. accordingly, especially in the summer months here. Uh, as far as adoptions go, how are they looking right now? Um, we've got a plethora. Good. <laughs> well, I mean, good and bad. I mean, good to people have a selection, but bad that there's so many animals that need homes. Yeah. Um, right now, fortunately, we only have two cats available. That's good. Good yeah. news. The cats are, um, are, are one is her name out. is Bellatrix. Okay, she's about a fourteen, fifteen week old domestic long hair, um, black and silver tabby. Oh, okay. Is she a little bit wild? Hence the name Bellatrix. No, I was just in a Harry Potter kit. Oh, okay. So I thought maybe she got a little, little no, bit of her a personality. No, her hair is wild. <laughs> so, like you know how Bellatrix hair is always mm-hmm. like this. Okay, her hair is like this on okay. her ears. So I was like. Bellatrix. There you go. So she's got the look, but more more kinder, gentler version she is, of the She Bellatrix. has her moments, though. However, there's certain, like, hand soaps that she does not like the smell of. Really? And ginger is one of them. Okay. And so, like, if you have ginger on your hands and she sniffs it, like, she snubs you. She's like, mm. ah. And walks off. You know what? Um, And I think this is most cats. You want to get my cat freaked out? Put some Vicks uh, vapor rub. rub on. Oh, man. That cat... You would have thought I offended her. Like she'll smell it. Like, <laughs> like she gives that's, you. She stops and gives you that look. Bellatrix does. Yeah. Like she. Like her like, eyes. How go dare like, you make me smell that? <laughs> yeah. It's like, are you kidding me? And like she walks off. Yeah. Um, and then the other cat is Miss Muffins. She is a uh, muted calico. Okay. Uh, super sweet, super friendly. Um, she's coming on about ten-ish months of age. Um, very affectionate. Has cool. her calico moment okay. where she's like, ah. Um, and then she's like, oh, okay, hi. Okay. You it's know? like, like no, it's certain breeds of cats. Yeah. Tortoise shells, it, certain breeds just do that. That's what they and do. And I laugh so. because everybody tells at work tells everybody that tortoise shells have my personality. <laughs> and I started laughing. I was like, it's because we're one. Yeah. I understand them. <laughs> well, I guess I'm getting a bit of it because I've had mine for years and her and I are very simpatico. So. <laughs> yeah. We're. 
most Twitter shells are like, uh, don't you touch me. I'm like, hi, baby. They're yeah. like, oh, hey, you're one of us. Yeah. Well, I literally, she comes, like, my, my cat greets me like a dog. Every, she meows, she flops down for her rub down. I mean, it's it's very dog-like, and, and that's un... Un-cat-like? Yeah. And yeah. so her and I are kind of like, she literally, like, if I go to the bathroom, I don't let her in because I, I want some peace and quiet, and <laughs> she'll just be harassing me the whole time, so <laughs> I don't let her in. But when I get out, she's there, and she's... <laughs> And tell me, and then she's got to lead me to the. I mean, it's a whole thing. Yeah. And uh, and 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 she. Tortoiseshells does... have and calicos have this very distinct personality. Yeah. And it's weird because each one is different in its own way, but it's all similar. Yeah. But either way, it's it. They're very loyal cats. Once you, once you establish that trust, and that's what it is. Now that she's got my trust, I mean, I can't get rid of her if I want. You know what I mean? Like she's <laughs> she's, she's going to be that creeper she's cat on my that's hip. looking through your yeah. window like. What did yeah. you do to me? I love it, and I love her, and I'm so happy she does that. But yeah, I couldn't get rid of her if I wanted to. Now, you know, <laughs> <laughs> she would. I, quite frankly, I don't know how she'd react if 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 she was at another home. I don't know because uh, my wife be and I. Feral. Yeah, my wife and I. Let's just say we can do things to that cat that no other person on this planet are going to be able to do. She'll she'll kill you. Like I, I don't even like even when we take her to the vet and we had to take her overnight or whatever. We have to go back to the back room. To put her in the kennel because they can't do it. They won't. And these are people that deal with pets all the time. And they're like, uh, we, I was like, and then I walk back, Hannah, and I grab her and she goes right in. <laughs> uh huh. That is the tortoise show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's a unique thing, but in some ways, I love that. I love that we have that connection and no one else does. That's kind of a cool, in my personally, you know, it's a bond. Yeah, exactly. So. That's what makes being pet owners. The beauty of being a, a, a pet owner and a pet lover. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's good. So you got a couple cats uh, right now. How about the dogs? We have a lot. Yeah. Um, we still have the five um, American bulldog mix pups. They're not big. We don't know what they're mixed with because the mom Got out of the yard, came back, was pregnant. No, oh, okay. um, they are eight months old, but none of the five weigh over thirty pounds. So it was a smaller dog. Yeah. Do they have any any kind of lookings or markings of another dog? Other they than look like a bulldog. Bulldog. Just smaller, like, like an American bulldog, because what a lot of people don't realize is American bulldog is an English bulldog, but taller. Gotcha. And not such a push and snout. Okay. So they have like the boxerish face, like an American bulldog does. And they're lean like an American bulldog, but they're short. Hmm. Interesting. So they're not, they're all about that tall. Okay. So if you love that bulldog style dog, but you don't want the bigger version that will eat you out of house and home and all that, this might be a good. And uh, they're all females. We have five of them. Okay. Um, there's Puddin', Cindy, Speckles, Smushy, and Fluff. And they're fun dogs. They're just good. And again, we talk about loyalty and things. Uh, generally speaking, those dogs are, again, they, they, they'll follow you to the fire. Cause and all of these guys are completely leash trained now. Oh, okay. So they've got some work under their belt. So all you probably need to do is get them spayed and... And, uh, and, and rabies, then, yeah, microchip. And all that. And then uh, they'll, they'll probably be pretty easy to work with once you start putting them into your routines and, they and things. Su- they're super excited for love, for attention. You know, they, they're the eager to please, eager to get affection... Uh, pepperonis. <laughs> <laughs> they see that back. They're like, oh, okay, yeah. this is business now. <laughs> um, and then we do have um, Peaches, which is um, a pit mix. Um, she's going on five months old now. Uh, we have Jax. I hope she finds a home soon because pit bulls get the bad rap and people. But to be and, honest, if you treat those dogs, they're the best, most loyal, friendly dogs on the hilarious. planet. Hilarious. Yeah. So they she, are very good family dogs. If you treat them like a dog and not doing the stupid stuff people do with them, you know. She's very well acclimated to the leash and harness. She sees that. She's like, I'm going <laughs> to the park. But so she's in her phase to where, um, you know, you have your lanky teenager stage. Mm-hmm. Well, pit bulls don't have that stage. They have the bulking muscle building stage. So she went from this scraggly looking little puppy with extra skin to got I look like I went to the- <laughs> She got the guns gym now. Today, and I was like, <laughs> "Wow, I gotta upsize your harness." Well, and that's and I think that's part of the stigma too, because they do look like intimidating dogs when you see them. 
Uh, and so people, but but to be honest, they're so friendly. They got a big heart. They really, I mean, yeah, any dog will be aggressive. You make them that way. But and pit bulls, p- because they look like tough, people want to do that to them. And I'm like, no, those dogs. If they need to be, they will. Right. However, and you, you don't have to make them that way. Exactly. And and they the only time they will do that for if you become the family, the only time you will see the aggressive side when that home is in peril, and then he will come to life for you. And and at the end of the day, I want that dog in my house. I want that dog to know if my kids are here and someone breaks in and I'm not there to stop them, and and that dog's there to chew a head off of a guy getting into my home. I'll, by all means. By, exactly. And then at the same time, that dog will lick my kid's face, and that's a pit bull. And if you train them right, that's exactly what they'll do. You could you could put your kids around them and lay on them and all that kind of stuff, and they'll love it. But the moment someone harms them, or is or in a that dog will be the first one there to defend them. And that's and I will tell you, and that's how pit bulls are if they're if, if first hand experience. Yeah. If you are disciplining your child, mm-hmm. you put that dog outside because. That dog is protecting your kids, yeah. even from you. Yeah. So if you are trying to discipline your child from doing something wrong, yeah. you know, put your dog in another room. Sure, so they'll understand So that it. way you're able to make that disciplinary action with your children. Sure. And the dog's not seeing you as a threat to the kids. But my, my hope is to, to, to get rid of some of the stigma on these dogs because They're if, the, if the you goofiest, treat them like the dogs are amazing. Fun-loving, yeah. you know, Peach is hilarious. Yeah. Like, if you, like, don't look at her head, you just look at her body, she looks like a tank. Yeah. And then you look at her head and she looks like Goofy Dwarf. <laughs> She's like, huh? Well, and this is it. I think if someone saw, like, a pit bull, like, running at him and everything... Here's the thing. If the dog knows you and everything, you know what I mean? Chances are they'll knock you down and lick you. That's, their it's, mouth's it's, wide yeah. open. You see the teeth, yeah, but that's only because their jowls are yeah. flapping. No, it's, just, it's not. They're just they're intimidating not. looking, and then people automatically assume by their look that they're mean. And I was like, they can be if you treat them as such, just like any human would be. You treat them badly, they're going to react badly. That's just and what happens. What a lot of people don't realize is pit bulls are number 10 on the dogs for attacking. Really? The very first dog for Chihuahua. known to attack <laughs> is a dachshund. Dachshund, okay. And it was got to be something little. <laughs> Pomeranians are second. Yeah. Poodles are third. Yeah. Chihuahuas are fourth. Okay. I knew they had to be German in there. shepherds are before pit bulls. Really? Yes. And So, and, and they get this study by post office people who get bit by dogs (laughs) they are uh ones you see a lot of them so that's a pretty good so how they categorize this is you know anytime a postal worker gets bit or Mm -hmm. fedex ups person you know they take a bite report gotcha well it's logged into a census so that way you know they count how many dog bites for postal people versus the breed that's did it what the situation was and all of that Mm -hmm. and the number one dog to bite postal people Hence, strangers that they see every single day is a dachshund. Interesting. Do you think they'd see that coming? I mean, they're little dogs. And it takes a while to get there. <laughs> but what's funny is, is dachshunds are very much like chihuahuas. You know, yeah, they'll true. hide behind something, mm-hmm. and then you not see them, and then they run out and Right, you. yeah. They're, but dachshunds they're are also a hunter. You know, they're bred to go in holes. In holes, that's why they're shaped the way they are. Yeah, they're going in to pull uh, whatever creatures living down in mm-hmm. there. So, interesting. Yeah. Them Jack Russells are the same way. They're, they're yep. bred, that's Rat why they're terriers, kinda, yeah. fox terriers, they're all bred to go in and come out. Yeah. But um, any dog can be aggressive if you make it that way. Sure. Pit bulls, you know, unfortunately, they have the bad rap because they have the capability of being overly aggressive mm-hmm. when made to be. Yeah. But if they're treated... As a family member, mm-hmm. warm, loving home, you know, a part of the family, the yeah. only aggression you're going to see is if somebody's trying to harm you or your family yeah, members. Yeah, they'll, they'll let the kids ride them. They'll do all kinds of stuff. I mean, I wouldn't do that with a dog, but what I'm saying is they're so tolerant of that kind of stuff that they'll let them do it. And uh, that's, I mean, that's What's what I'm saying. They're not. What's even funnier is yeah. my sister has two pit bulls and a Great Dane. Mm-hmm. Um, her Great Dane is sibling to mine. Well, one of her pit bulls is the mother to everybody. Nobody's ever had a litter of puppies because they're all fixed, but she's mother hen. Gotcha. She has to clean their eyes and ears every single day. And if they (laughs) don't, she pushes them down. She pushes the Great Dane down, who's three times her size, lays on her so she can clean her ears. Oh, that's cool. 
So they are a very nurturing yeah. breed. Yeah. And they they want to care. They want to love. Yeah. They want to give. And so there is one that's looking for a good home right now. At the it's been there about five months. And it, yeah. it needs a good home. She's, so. and I'm telling you, Peaches, she got her name because when she came in, she was as cute as a peach. You know, <laughs> she's the same color, yeah. beautiful eyes, and just sweet. Yeah. Well, and she's still the same way, but a lot bigger. Well, hopefully someone has a place in their home and their heart for her. So. And good then deal. Um, pit bulls as well. We have a Jax, who's a year old. He's a gray and white pit. Okay. Um, He's... Super energetic, so if you have a active lifestyle, okay. he's going to be a good one. He might for be a good ranch dog or something like that. Maybe it sounds like. I think he's going to be more of the you know let's go hiking, running kind of guy. Okay, so if you um, like to go do those kind of kind of like things, if you're bike riding and they mm-hmm. ride along next to you, that's what he likes. Like he likes to go. Okay, and then come back, and then go, uh, and then come back. Okay, he loves to play ball. Um, he's really funny when he's got one of the balls with a rope. Mm-hmm. Because he grabs the rope and slings it, and then inevitably knocks himself in his head, and then looks back like, "Who did that to me?" So he doesn't get that toy anymore because you know he made one eye go up. He in beats the himself sky. up doing uh, playing with that toy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's very, very sweet, cool. very loving. So you got um, a boy and a girl looking for homes right now. So. And as for little dogs, we have twelve Chihuahua puppies. Wow! So they're back, huh? Well, you were a little dry on Chihuahuas for a little bit there, but now they're back in full force. Huh? Yep. Well, we got a group of fifteen dumped off, and so far three of them have been adopted. Okay. Um, we still have twelve. Eight of them are females. Four are males. Okay. Um, they're just right. They're all short hairs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Some of them have, and I think they're mixed with dachshunds. Um, okay. Not one hundred percent sure, um, but some of them have like Seem little, little short, longer. stubby legs, and then some have like the normal Chihuahua legs. Okay. But they all have, you know, like the little Chihuahua head. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't miss that. No, um, and I would name them all, but there's twelve of them. So <laughs> go on the website, and, and they're you can all see... ready to be adopted mm-hmm. today. Okay, cool. They I mean, they'll need to get spayed weight. or neutered, but yeah, they're but... all of weight where they can not be adopted. No, nope. yeah. they Good are deal. all out. Excellent. Two of them are actually up front in the cat room okay. because they are still too small to where they can get through the chain link out in the big kennel. So you got to put them in the small. So they're in a cat cage, but they are of weight to be adopted. They are cool, and so they're just little guys. Yeah, it's Lola and Finn. Those are the two smallest ones. And Lola weighed 2.6 pounds, and Finn weighs 2.8 pounds. Man. I think I ate and a burger And they're 17 than that. weeks old. <laughs> wow. So that, so they're, I wonder what their end game will be. Like, like maybe, do you think they'll get to like 10, 11 pounds? I or? think they're probably going to max out at five or seven. Yeah. I don't think they're going to be super big. Okay. Um, Lola, for sure, I think she's going to stay probably a four pounder. Because she's the smallest out of all of them. Okay. And her head is no bigger than the fidget spinner here. Oh, wow. Like, it's small. How tiny. And, okay, the smallest has the biggest mouth, yes, we know. <laughs> that usually happens. But she, um, if you're giving her attention, you know, she's just all happy about it. And then when you stop, she sits back and she just gives you this <laughs> deep bark. And I'm like, how does that come out of you? She's like, I am unpleased with you get over here now nice so dog knows what 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 it wants and, and she we'll does do oh, good. she does and she's super affectionate um very playful very active um just all around sweet cute nice. so hopefully that finds a home here pretty soon too well, along with its brothers and sisters <laughs> yeah there's a lot of them that go around. Good deal. Uh, any other dogs we want to highlight, or is that pretty much cover the gamut um, there? That covers so, a good mass majority of it. So really, whether you're looking for large, small, there's a good variety at the Humane Society right now. Like I said, a little, little lean on cats, but we got two adorable cats that are ready for homes right now if, you, if you've got the space for them. And, and, and keep checking back often because, uh, A, pets constantly come in and out and things like that. But... but um, but if, if, if you go to the website, roslyhumane.org, you can see every single pet that is calling the Humane Society home right now. You may notice that there's a not available uh, notification over the picture. If that is the case on a, one of the animals you see, uh, that means the animal is in quarantine. It doesn't mean it's been adopted. It means it's in quarantine. It's either new to the facility and they need to make sure it's, it's, it's safe and healthy or it's waiting to wait, make weight or it needs vaccinations, or, you know, it's something medically that it needs before it's available to go to the public. So it's in that situation. 
But what I'm saying is if you see that dog or cat that's not available and you're like, oh, that's what I've been wanting, I'm blah, 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 please reach out, call, check back. And and more times than not, if if you are constantly checking in and keeping up with it, um, when they are available uh, weight-wise or whatever, they come out of quarantine, you guys are ready and ready to go. You can even get the process done where all the preemptive stuff is done, if they need to come out for inspection, whatever that can, all that can be done so the day that the dog or cat is coming out of quarantine, you get to take them right to the vet, or actually the Humane Society will take it right to the vet, and then you can get that done, and 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 and, and uh, that's so the dog can be spayed or neutered, get chipped, all the things that you have to legally have done uh, to, to adopt a pet at the Humane Society. And then from there, you'll pick it up at your vet of your choosing, and now it's a part of your family. Yeah, so. the only thing that we cannot do while an animal is still in quarantine is meet and greets. Okay. Like you cannot physically meet That's the animal. That's going to have to wait till after. That has to wait until after, and then especially if you have other animals and kids, we have to do those introductions too. Gotcha. So, but we but can once you know, they come out of quarantine. Yeah, once they come out of quarantine, we can do all of that. We want to make sure that they don't have anything that's contagious to your animals. Yeah. That's going to go home with it, so that way but it if goes you need home to, safely. But if, if if you guys you know want to check, make sure there's a fenced in yard things mm-hmm. like that. obviously. Yeah, we if, can take care of all of the other yeah. stuff. It's just the actual essential meet and greets are the only thing that we imagine, cannot do. I imagine it's a little quicker for people that regularly adopt from there, and so you're like, "Well, I've been to your house three times. That's fine. It's good to go." So you if know? you are a regular and we've seen you, um, as long as you're not at the limit. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, uh, because we do have a ton of people that have like the hugest heart in the world, but there are limits now because people unfortunately don't realize that you know well, they, their heart gets so big but then their resources dry up yep. and they end up getting into a situation they can't get out of yep. and, and uh i know from the outside looking in we look at it like oh what a, how could someone live like that but generally speaking it didn't start that way it kind of and and what escalates what you're seeing is someone who wanted to help combined with their resources dried up probably even combined with a little mental health issue usually when someone's surrounding themselves and there's other aspects of their life that's not working out right now, and they're trying to fix it with cats or dogs. And so, <laughs> you know, yes. so there's a little of that going on, but I'm just trying to tell you, it's not, people aren't doing nefarious stuff. It's just, you know, they made poor decisions and life happened. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. You know? Yeah, so, but yeah, you, but you're very stringent on that. If, if, you know, you, there's certain, you know, there's ordinances, you're allowed to only have an X amount of number of animals, they have to be chipped. You know, that's if you're a city, and, and even if you live out in the county, there are still limits because because you're adopting from the city of Roswell. It's going to have to be chipped. So even if you're coming from Artesia and you want to adopt a pet here, even though you're not living in Roswell and there's no ordinance in your community for a chi- for a chipping because you're getting it from Roswell, that that pet will be chipped before it goes to your home. Yes, because we have to follow all city ordinances to be able to operate. Um, so. Regardless, if you live here, Timbuktu, mm-hmm. um, it will be um, Chavez County ordinances that are followed or City of Roswell ordinances that are followed. Gotcha. To be able to be adopted. Yeah. But that being said, we still love to come. So, you know, I know we're the mecca for de- for dogs and cats because we are because, uh, other, you know, you know, we, you know, it is very common for when some dogs and cats that have been here a long time, once once they've been here. Fortunately, there's other communities like Albuquerque and parts even farther north than that that are saying, no, bring them to our community. We'll find a home. We've got people that are ready and waiting to adopt. But at some point, that's going to dry up and things. So we're, we're either way, we've got to fix our own problem. And that problem is spaying, neutering, doing all that. But And people being responsible being for responsible. Their, what they do. And that's all why we have things like why your pet is chipped, why it has to be spayed or neutered before because what's happening is these these pets are decided not they're loved or uh, that was that's too much work to own and they turn them loose and then they go out they're feral and they start reproducing or getting killed or whatever and next thing you know um, we got a bunch of cats living in an alley and that's what happens <laughs> right so. and you know when they're exposed to the elements they're gonna get sick oh yeah then they're gonna spread it yeah and then it's even if you have issue. an indoor animal you know that you know, has gone even nose to nose through a screen window with another cat that's outside. They can still contract it. Even if your animal never goes outside, but you leave, you know, a window cracked, you Mm -hmm. know, that your cat can lay in the ledge and get, you know, sunlight. If another animal has access to 
that screen, they can still transfer any illness. Well, what if you get stuff all over your shoes from another cat bringing it into your house and your cat gets into that? Right. And, and then you're you're the transfer unintentionally, of course. But A that's, lot of people don't realize, you yeah. know, we bring home a lot of stuff on the bottom of our shoes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah. So, so that's why we do all this. To It's for the overall health and safety of our community. I mean, yeah. I get it. We all love cats and dogs. You're like, oh, what's wrong with the cat? Now, because it's unsanitary. It's unsafe. And it's it's bad for these cats. I, that cat that's living in your home, they'll live 18, 20 years. Those feral cats, they get a year. They're lucky. You know what I mean? It, it, yep. it, it's it's just the way of the beast. It is the way life happens. Life is life doesn't go the way we want it to, and you got to learn to adapt and, and, and overcome. And, and that's a lesson we all learn, sometimes the easy way, sometimes the hard way. But it's a lesson we're all going to learn at some point or another. <laughs> right. Some of us learn the easy way. Some of us, unfortunately, you know, need a few knockdowns before we learn anything. Absolutely. Uh, and then finally, um, let's talk thrift store. Uh, so, how, how is that looking right now? Very, very well stocked. Good. Very well stocked. Um, when I talked to Camille yesterday, um, they've got a ton of wall decor. So just random you know decorations for the house um summer clothing swimsuit shorts tank tops all of the above they've got a plethora of it great um any kitchen items you know uh, silverware cooking pots pans baking um i saw a couple toaster ovens over there nice they've got full-on kitchens for people getting ready for college or moving into their own apartments for the first time um, all of the events that are about to be coming up that require formal dresses, they've got a lot of them. Okay. So if you're looking for pretty some much worn once, put back on the hanger weddings, and put in the bag. And, all that kind of stuff. Huh? Yeah. Cool. Um, and they now have a area set up for just pet supplies. So like leashes, harnesses, you know, stuff that, you know, we're not able to use on our side. Um, they sell it on their side. Okay, great. There's even some dog beds, dog sweaters, oh, nice. costumes, fun little stuff. Um, and then also this Saturday, in honor of Father's Day, the entire store will be half off. Nice. So everything on the shelves in the thrift store this Saturday only this Saturday will be fifty percent off. It's already deeply discounted price. Yeah. So for, those, that means furniture those, too. Everything is <laughs> those going items to be. you pay a dollar for, you now be paying fifty cents for. <laughs> yep. Then <laughs> like the hanging clothes, the majority of it is like one or two dollars, so yeah. that it's going to be fifty cents or a dollar. So literally. Before you could buy a whole wardrobe for probably 10, 20 bucks. Now you can buy it for like five, five or 10, ten bucks. Yep. <laughs> um, shoes, they've got a lot of nice shoes. Um, purses, so if you're a purse person. Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we connect on that that was, level. There's a couple fingers that need to be pointed in this room. <laughs> um, they always have a lot of very nice purses. And, you know, they do a really good job at sorting through the stuff to make sure that it is, uh -huh. you know, nice and sellable and not holy. And, sure, yeah. You know, you're Something not... Something you would... You would actually own yourself. If, right. If you look at it and say, yeah, that's beat up. I wouldn't own it. Then no one else would either. So Right. Yeah. Um, they've, they've got a ton of stuff in there. So um, my Keep husband's like a regular. kid in a candy store when he comes to the thrift store. He's like, how much money do I have to spend today? And I'm like, <laughs> just go shop. Yeah. It's, but, it's it, You really do get a great. And I'm telling you, I, I don't know why everybody, if you're like in the market and you're like, oh, I need to get a new coffee pot or a new microwave. I, and most of us go either online or go right to the big box store. Forget that noise. Just go right to the Humane Society thrift store. Go to any of the thrift stores in town. Right. Here you know, if say, one doesn't have it, one of them's going to. Right. And you're going to get a, probably a microwave that you would have paid three times where it was, and it, it's practically brand new or barely used. The and, majority of the ones that Camille paid, gets in are, you know, probably, you know, um, from a senior's house that, yeah. you know, really only used it so they could have a clock in the kitchen. They pay $200 for it new, and you get it for like 30 bucks. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. Much. And, you know, that's, it's amazing to see, you know, people will buy stuff, never use it, and then donate it brand new. Yeah. And we love it because, you know, we get to sell brand new stuff for a cheaper price. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And they have a good selection of clothing. You know, they sort through every piece of clothing that goes out to make sure it's not holy. Okay, the style holy, that's okay, but not Holy by design, okay. Yeah, but holy not the by extra holy. wear and tear, not so much. Yeah, <laughs> so um, 
the employees of the thrift store work extremely hard to try to make sure everything that's sure. out there is something that they would essentially buy and take home themselves. And, and we're running short on time, but on that note as well, please remember, we thank you very much for donating and contributing yes. to the thrift store. Please keep doing that. However, re please remember, if it's clothing and stuff that's, again, wholly not by design, don't donate it because, in, in essence, you're costing the Humane Society money because they got to take it to the dump, which is not free for them. And so, so by you leaving all them old clothes instead of you taking care of it and throwing it out, now you got to make the Humane Society do it, and they got to pay for it where you get it to do it for free. So, just be a little more scrutinous as you're going through the clothes and making sure. Oh yeah, that shirt looks like it's got half a lasagna still sitting on it. Let's throw that yeah. one away. <laughs> you know, whatever. You know, now if, if my rule of thumb is if you wouldn't buy it from a garage yeah. sale, don't donate now, it. Now if it's a good shirt that just shrunk on you, then then that's a perfectly good shirt. But the dryer know. shrunk it. Yeah, those, yeah. Those dirty thieves. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then finally, um, again, check out the website roslyhumane.org. Yes. Um, there you can learn more about becoming a member too. If you'd like to help out that way, uh, your pets, your kids, you. Everybody can be a member of the Humane Society, and uh, that funding, again, also goes back. And, again, I, I should mention this earlier. When you buy from the thrift store, when you become a member of the Humane Society, when you adopt a pet from the Humane Society, all the money you're paying uh, and donating is going back into vet bills, uh, food or supplies, food supplies uh, light cleaning supplies, everything it takes to run that shelter, that money's going to use for that. So, uh, so know you're helping the next future pets find a home by you coming and buying stuff and adopting pets and things like that. So, And we are open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 to 12 and 1 to 4.30. And the thrift store is Wednesday through Saturday, 9 to 12. Or sorry, <laughs> 10 to 4.30. <laughs> you say it enough, you get kind of stuck in your it head. It just runs all together eventually. Yeah. But uh, come out and shop. Don't forget, Wednesday is the new stuff day on it the shelves is. at the thrift store. So uh, if you happen to pop in on a Wednesday around 10 o'clock and wonder why it looks like a party over there, it's because everyone knows that's when the new stuff gets on. So, yep. so uh, either be a part of that to get in first dibs, or if you're like, I'll avoid the rush, maybe show up a little later in the day <laughs> after the, and the first rush goes Throughout through. the entire day of every day that they're working, they're continuously bringing stuff out yeah. and stocking us. So if so somebody buys often. stuff, you know, they come back and put more out. Yeah, check back often. Yeah, it's, They're it's better stocked than Walmart. <laughs> and they're on it, too. <laughs> Well, thank you, Crystal, thank as always. You. We'll see you next time here. Stay stay cool uh, as much as possible. Uh, it is.